In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a spreadsheet that helps you visualize your life. You will be able to enter the key moments and activities of your life. This will automatically generate a big picture visualization of your life and what you have spent your time on. This simple exercise can have a huge impact on your life as it helps you reflect on your past, present, and future, and inspire you to make the most of your time. So let's get right into it as they say on YouTube. Let's build this from the start. So we leave four cells empty on the left. We have seven cells here. Now, the first thing that uh, you need to do is you need to select 52 cells. You need to count until 52, or you can uh, just create some numbering and adding one uh, every time. And to get you started, you, you try to put them a little bit closer together so you can see them all on your screen. And the f but the final formatting will be done towards the end. So you have the 52 cells here. You might have guessed that this is for the, the weeks. It will be later on to cut our year into 52 components. Now, if we go back to the top here, I'm just going to show you for one here and after we'll be duplicating. Uh, I have five cells here. So you start right from the from the left hand side or you could leave like a, I did a, an empty an empty cell here. Um, but you select five cells and you put one in the center. So there will be like a reference for us. We can remove it towards the end. Then you, under that, you select five cells. But this time you will merge them. Uh, because the cells are so narrow that you won't be able to put any text otherwise. And here you will put your first period. And, and actually I'm just going to put period one here. I'm just not going to put school, which is often the first event we have. Here under that I do the same. I just merge the five cells here and I just merge the, f the five next uh, cells. And I put start date and end date so I know what those cells are about. So here in the first one, if you want, uh, as a reference, you can put uh, a start date and then you can put an end date. So this is where we will have all our periods. This is to differentiate us from the events. The, the events happen at one point in time. Perfect example is a birth date. So oh, it could be when you get graduated, when you get married, it's just for once off. So there will be only one cell. So therefore they only need one date. They don't need a beginning and, a, and, a, and an end. Here I just I have birth date, but uh, because it should be the first event should be the birth date. In a scenario where you don't want to track your life or you want to track something else, which is very possible, here you would put the very first date that is required. So I just put a, a random birth date. Actually, I'm just going to put it in, in May. Uh, I'll take 72. So this way that will be nice uh, in the middle of the uh, spreadsheet. So this is step one. Uh, we create uh, those and we'll be duplicating them later on. So we should have the 52 cells here. Here I have the weeks. Um, I can also put today's date here. I just uh, type today and here, if you don't know the function, it's uh, equal today and with empty brackets after. So we we'll want to show this uh, on our live uh, spreadsheet as well. It's an important date today. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm just going to copy more of those cells. As you can see, I've added more periods, more colors. So the colors, it's up to you. If you want to follow this, you can. Uh, you don't have to create all the periods uh, right from the start and you can add them as you need them. But uh, we'll have to bear in mind the next step of the process, which is to format the grid. So the more you add them, the more you'll have to format. But for the moment, I just want to stick with eight periods and eight events. Now, what have I done? So what I've changed, I've, I've just colored the, the, the two days date here because actually I want to put it here and I remove the text because we know it's today. One thing to do is to name those fields. I've named this first field here, the first period. This is why it's good to keep the one. I call it beg pair one. The end is end pair one. So here, if you look at the name, so big per one, big per two, big per three, and that's it. Now, for the birth date, for the events, for the eight events here, I just do the same. Make sure that you have enough letters. So this is where I put all event one for the reason I mentioned before. So I will name this one event one, event two, event three. 
And after, it might help if you just put some dates. If you want to put some dates uh, 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 as you build it, you, you will see it makes it uh, make things a bit simpler. So what you can do is you can reference all the fields. Like for instance, uh, let's say that you really start uni just after college and you can put the start date of uni. You can refer to the end of college here. Just an idea. Now that's it. So all the top is ready. So the reason why I had to merge all this is I wanted to have the dates showing on the same screen as the the grid. I prefer it this way. Let's build this grid then. So we have the 52 cells. I'm just going to jump to the to the building of the grids. The first thing that we want to do is to start with the first year. So we said the birth date will be our first event. So the first year will be the year of this event here, year of event one. So here, if you're born in 68, the year will be there. And then we just add one uh, all the way down. So I haven't talked about the height of this grid. Um, don't worry about the colors yet, but uh, we had 52. So we built that before we take 52 and I have it all down to 90. Uh, I think 90 uh, is a reasonable innings. Um, but from the website that I inspire myself from for this project, which I have a link in the description, uh, I think they took 90 as a basis. But you can you can put more or, le or less if you're pessimistic or more if you're optimistic. But um, this is what, what you do. So you first build a grid of 52 to 90. And here you put the years on the, on the side here. Then what I do here is I take the first day of that year. So in order to do this, you take the date of this field here and then you put one one which means i want the first day of the first month and that would be useful to refer to the grid later on and you copy you drag this down and you copy this all the way down towards the bottom you should have the last date in 90 years from uh, the birth date and you should have the 1st of January. If you want to do that as a sanity check, uh, you can do it. And here I have the age. Uh, I think it's it, you could just leave the, the year, but I think it's good to have the, the age. But I have actually merged those two cells because the cells, as you'll see, we want to put them quite close together. And when we put them quite close together, uh, it, would, it looks all squashed like this. So this is why I'm merging the two cells here. Uh, so and every five cell, I add five to this. So you can just merge those two to make sure that we see the edge. And then you copy plus five every time. So now you should have a grid. You should have uh, a 52 to 90 grid. So you can put uh, already the default color that you went for that green. So don't worry about formatting itself or the cells. We, we, we put them all neat in the end. But I want to keep them uh, big enough so you can see what's going on. So here, for instance, I, I have some type of gray as a background. I mean, it's debatable. But if you just press gray here as a background, you should have everything uh, as the default color uh, as gray. And then uh, every event should have uh, the color that I refer to here. So you should be able to get your, your color here, for instance, is uh, the, th the third of the gold. I think it's is it called gold accent four. And here it's a different uh, one. It's the blue, the first top of the blue here. Uh, here it's green, etc. So I'll, I'll let you do all the coloring because it could become a bit tedious if I go through all the colors. So. Uh, make sure you ha that you have um, all the colors uh, that you want here. Uh, you might want to start with just three periods and three events, for, for instance. So now let's start with our formatting. There are two ways to do formatting on a big grid like this. The first way is just to format one grid. And after when we go back into the conditional formatting, we expand it to the full grid. And But here I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm just going to select the full grid. And I'm just going to do conditional formatting. And then what you want to do here is to add a new rule. And you want to select user formula to determine which cells to format. OK, so I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. And I just want to show you the, the path. 
Now conditional formatting, now if I go back here, let's I just assume that I have just done the first one, that we are just doing this one here. So you would have you would have selected this, use a formula, and then you will be at this stage here. So we might need a bit of time to digest this, but um, I don't want to go into the calculation and the, and the thing. I think, I guess you're going to have to trust me on this. <laughs> but more or less, what I'm doing is we are on the cell here. So based on the start of the year and based on the week above, I check if it belongs to this period or not. And I will be do that for every cell. So if I just select one cell, if I just select this one, it will it will check that uh, uh, the first week of 1968, it check oh does, is that, does that fall into this? And if it falls into this, yes, I color. And here it will start and say okay the f the the fifth week of uh, the year 1970. Does that uh, fall into that period? And yes, he would say yes. So I'm just going to put that in uh, in amber or gold. So I'm doing this for everything. So once you've done one, you just duplicate the rule. You go under the rule, and then you just have to change the back pair one with back pair two for the second one, and end pair two for the second one, and then you put that color here. So you start with a few first to check if it works. <laughs> So that uh, that will cover up the period. Now to cover up the event date itself, it's a little bit different. First, for two days date that I want to show in in bright red here, just going to show you. You're just checking using the same method if I am exactly on a period here on today. Uh, something that I, I'm not sure if I told you, but I've we need to name this two days field today. We need to name the cell. Today we need to give it a name so it'll be easier. Uh, if you haven't named it yet, you can just refer to that cell F2 here. So that's it for today. So that will uh, you can have a look at the, the formulas. I can put them in the description. And now for the event date, we have the same formula here. So this is a, a formula that is different than the period. So you you you'll need to have a have a look at this. Uh, more precisely. Let me just show you there in detail. So that's it. So I, I suggest as soon as you finish the formatting for one, you duplicate it and you put it into another uh, worksheet here. So you can use the, the same blank template to work on several things. You can have one for your travels, you can have one for your work, you can have one for a lot of things. If you want to get a good feel of what you have done in your life, I think that can work very well. Now, uh, there is just uh, one thing that I want to mention. So first of all, the grid itself, you might uh, might not want to have it in completely black. Uh, so you can uh, here put maybe a bit more subtle black the way I had it. I think it reads better than a very strong black. So you just do this and then you press outline and inside. The other thing is if you want this wonderful 3D effect here, you just select the cell, you just leave the top cell as it is, um, but you just drag down, uh, you create a very narrow cell here, you drag it all the way down and you apply some black in it. And then you drag the black all the way back here with the exception of the first one. So that gives a very <laughs> Very fancy. Actually, I just removed it. It gives you a very fancy uh, shade effect. Just need to put that back. So what um, I like to do is to hide what is not required. So if you want to keep the edge and not the year, uh, you just select those cells. You press, you go to data, press group, and then you have this little thing here at the top and you can just remove it and you can focus on this. You can also, if you want, do the same trick, select all this data group and remove this. So now to get a, a better view, I've just, I just prefer to have them a bit more squeezed because here it doesn't really give you the, the full life overview. So just you just can squeeze them very, very close. So if you close them very close, because we have merged those two cells here, we can still see the, the edge. Uh, the year obviously is getting squashed now, so you have to do the same trick. So showing the edge might work here. 
if you want to do the same with the yo, you're going to have to create a separate cell for it. And uh, that's it. So here's your life. Okay, so I think that was pretty simple, but I, I just find that I just find that great to have an overview of your life like this on on one thing. And to see your today here, and uh, what can I do for the rest of the year and the likes. So I hope you like this. I leave you with this. <laughs> <laughs>